What is up, everybody? Matt Moda here to give you my three favorite WNBA bets for tomorrow's WNBA betting slates. I'm recording this on Thursday night, giving you three bangers to hammer for Friday's betting slate. Before we can get into those picks, of course, we got to do a recap, which kind of continues our hit or miss season that this has been for the WNBA. We did cash our only play that we had on Thursday, so 1 0 plus one unit on Thursday, but on the entire season, we're just slightly, slightly in the green, like literally plus 0 0.41 units, as about slightly in the green as it can get, less than a unit. So still looking to kind of turn things around and get ourselves more and more squarely into the green as the season goes on. I got three bangers for you guys to lock in that I do really, really like. All three of them are going to be one unit plays. So if you're interested in more WNBA bangers or you're interested in just what I have to say in general, would appreciate it if you could hit that subscribe button and let's get into it. So play number one, we are looking at the Fever versus Dream game and I'm taking this to go under 163. You can get this at minus 110 odds at DraftKings. So there's a lot that I have to say about this play. Number one, I get that I was just burned by taking an under in a game of these exact two teams last week. But there are a lot of reasons why I think the under is another good play today, even though when you consider the fact that I got burned by it last week. Number one, what I mean, if you're new to my channel, then you wouldn't know this, but what I talk about all the time, fading recent results. So the fact that last game went over, bet the opposite of that in the next game. Now, of course, that's not perfect. There's a lot more to it, but I love to fade recent results. More importantly, and the main reason why I like this under, and you can call me stupid for it, it feels like a rat line. It feels like the books are putting this price out there and they are begging, begging people to take the over. So what I'm going to go ahead and do, put on my tinfoil hat, think that is the case and bet the under. As I mentioned, these two teams literally just played, literally just played ex like what, basically a week ago, almost exactly a week ago. And yes, I got burned by taking the under in that game. That total closed at about 168.5 or 167.5, depending on what uh, books you look at. Not only did the total close five points higher than what we are getting it at today, but that game ended with 175 total points scored. It wasn't like it was even a close over. It was over by a million points. So now the books are pricing this over 10 points lower than what the actual total is ended at between these two teams from last week and about five points lower from what the over under closed at normally when the over under is five points different it's because only 150 points were scored as opposed to it going over so i don't really understand what the books are doing with this price here it seems fishy to me and if i'm on to something here hopefully i end up being looking like a genius end up being right because it just seems like a fishy line and i'll gladly just bet that vegas knows what they're doing and bet on the under with that said there are also reasons to believe that this total goes under as well. It's not just a tinfoil hat type of play, although I should track my tinfoil hat plays and see how these go over a full season. When you dive into the matchup, I do think that there are some reasons why the under is the play here, despite the fact that it just went over last week. One of the biggest indicators for points being scored is not offensive efficiency, defensive efficiency. It's actually pace. Pace has way more to do with the amount of points scored in a game than you would think and then how good an offense or how bad a defense is. It's all about pace. And over the last five games, which is the sample size I'm looking at for the WNBA because it's not a long season. So five games is kind of equivalent to 10 games in the, in the NBA is kind of what I'm looking at here. And for the NBA, I'd always look at the last 10 games. But regardless, over the last five games, the Fever are playing at the second slowest pace in the WNBA, while the Dream are not far behind them, playing at the fourth slowest pace in the WNBA. So two teams that are bottom four in terms of pace of play, with the, again, the Fever being the second slowest. And even if you look at the game that these two teams played last week, in which it went over by a million points, well, that game was played at a roughly average pace. So it wasn't like they were flying up and down the court. And I think that based on how these two teams are playing outside of that game, I do think that the pace in this game will be a little bit slower than it was last game. You know, the Dream have some injuries as well, which is going to hurt them. And the Fever defense has been playing better recently. You know, they spent most of the year, admittedly on a pretty brutal schedule, but they spent most of the year as the worst defense in the WNBA. If you look at, if you look at the last five games, they have 
only been the fourth worst defense in the entire NBA. Still counts as an improvement. Meanwhile, if you look at the dream, they are a dream, no pun intended, for games going under. They are horrendous on offense, and they're pretty good on defense. In that same span, the last five games, they have the fourth best defense in the WNBA and the second worst offense. So it's just really hard for me to see a ton of points being scored here, which leads me right into my next play. Caitlin Clark, under 17 and a half points, minus 110 odds at DraftKings. I just talked about how I don't think a ton of points are going to be scored in this game. So I will fade the rookie phenom and the polarizing player of Caitlin Clark and take her to go under 17 and a half points. I know that she has been playing well recently. The Fever have been playing well recently as well. But one thing that is, is tough for rookies is consistency. And that's been the case with Caitlin Clark. We've seen her blow up for games, but we have yet to see her go over 17 and a half points in three straight games, right? She, she's played 16 games on the year and she's gone over or under in exactly half. She's gone over eight times. She's gone under eight times. But as I mentioned, she has yet to go over three games in a row. Now, my argument is not, well, she's simply incapable of playing well three games in a row. No, my argument here is that inconsistency should be expected from a rookie, especially inconsistency from a rookie who scores as many points as she does behind the three-point line, right? We all know, I mean, she's a good passer and she can run, pick, and roll, but the three-point shot is what sets up everything in her game, and three-point shooting is inconsistent, especially for a rookie. And if my argument or in my, in my thought that the pace is going to be slower in this game, that obviously applies to the full game, that would apply to Caitlin Clark as well. And as I mentioned, the Dream defense has been solid over the past couple games, and more specifically has been solid in the ways in which Caitlin Clark scores. Now, the, the source I used for this data is props, uh, propsmadness.com, very awesome website. But Caitlin Clark scores the majority of her points as the pick and roll ball handler. The Dream give up the second fewest points per game to pick and roll ball handlers. And then the, the way in which Caitlin Clark scores the second most point uh, of her points per game, not the second most points per game, the second most of her points per game, which is kind of confusing. So number one is as a pick and roll ball handler. Number two is at the free throw line. She scores the second most of her points at the free throw line. Over the last five games, the Dreams are fouling at the fourth lowest rate in the WNBA. Further than that, Caitlin Clark scores 15% of her points via transition. Will the Dream have the third best transition defense in the WNBA, which makes sense because they play at a slower pace, which obviously leads to less transition points. Last time these two teams played, Caitlin Clark only scored seven points. Now, instead of fading those recent results, I'm actually going to back them because the Fever won that game and the Fever have been on a roll recently as well. So it's not like Caitlin Clark is out here looking for revenge or anything like that. Her team got the win and they didn't need her to score a bunch of points. And I kind of think the same thing is going to happen in this game. I lean towards the Fever winning straight up but I'm riding with the Caitlin Clark under. Let, uh, lastly, our third and final pick of the video. This is going to be in the Aces versus Sun game, and I'm taking Aja Wilson under 27 and a half points, minus 125 odds at uh, bet 365. Now this one, this one is going to be scary. The, the, the first play was a tinfoil hat play. This one is going to be a Pepto play because this one is not going to be fun. It's going to feel gross going down, but I absolutely love this play. We're fading the best player in the WNBA, the betting favorite to win MVP in the WNBA. We are betting her to go under her very, very high point total. Now, it's rare that you'll see a point prop over under this high in the WNBA. Now, it's it's high for good reason. I'm not sitting here saying that the books don't know what they're doing. I understand why it's priced at 27 and a half. She's been awesome. She's averaging 28 points per game. She's gone over this number in 10 of 13 games this season. So when you see all that, you're wondering why in the world are we fading her? It's all because of the matchup. The Sun defense is incredible overall, right? If you're going to look at categories in which defenses allow points, where? They're going to be good in a lot of categories. But that also does apply to where Aja Wilson scores a lot of her points. The Sun defense is awesome at guarding the ways in which Wilson scores. Wilson scores the majority of her points via spot up, as a spot up shooter. The Sun give up literally the fewest points per game to spot up shooters. The second most, uh, the second area in which she gets the most of her points, I'm kind of fumbling around my words here, but you get what I'm saying. The way in which she scores the second majority of her points, that's at the free throw line. The Sun give up the second fewest free throw attempts in the entire WNBA. Third up, how does she score the third most of her points per game? Via post up. The Sun allow the third fewest points per game to post up scores. 
And then lastly, the, the, the last, uh, the fourth one that I'll talk about here, Wilson scores 12% of her points via transition. The Sun have the best transition defense in the WNBA. You add all four of those categories together. That is 70% of the points in which uh, Wilson scores. 70% of the points in which she scores. The Sun are either the best, the second best, or the third best at guarding. It's really what it comes down here. And if I, if I was in a court case and I was defending this, my closing argument is that the books are pricing Aja Wilson's point prop at her average, while in my opinion, it's going to be tough to, to it's going to be tough to hit her average against this Sun defense. Not only is the Sun defense incredible, they also play at the slowest pace in the WNBA. Slowest pace on the season, slowest pace over the last five games. However, you want to slice it, the Sun play incredibly slow. Obviously, slow pace slows down scoring. So all in all, I love this underplay for AJ Wilson. Hopefully, she doesn't have a legacy game and make me feel stupid. But that's all we got. Rocking with the three plays that we have. If you're tailing, make sure to like, comment, and let me know. Other than that, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and have a good one.